Welcome to your virtual tour of Enope of St. Louis. Enope of St. Louis is located at 13416 Clayton Road, underneath the Straub's Grocery Store. We are down the basement stairs, and there's our office. We, um, this is the entrance to our center, and this is where we put our hours of operation, a little bit of our curriculum chart, our welcome, and usually a notice of some kind. And we have some flyers out here in case anyone stops by and wants to take one. Out here in the hall, we have a pickup area so that uh, if anyone misses class and needs to pick up their work remotely, they can do so in our packets. We use these plastic pockets to package up the work. That way, uh, when the kids bring them in, if for some reason they didn't put their names on all their sets, at least we have all their work together in one pocket. So they turn in the whole pocket, and then they get a brand new pocket each week, and we just keep recycling the pockets back in and out. So these are the kids that didn't make my last class, and so all their work is all packaged up and ready to go. So let's go on into the Anopi Center. This is the parent waiting area, and we have an abundance of chairs here, and uh, a communication center. In our communication center here we have a master set of all of our levels. And the idea is that when the children first come in, um, what they do is they'll come in this door, they'll turn here, and they will go to my planning area, which is right here. And you'll see those three baskets stacked up underneath the planning desk. Those are my different class baskets. So the yellow coordinates to my Saturday class, the red coordinates to my Tuesday class, the blues coordinate to my Wednesday class, and those are still out in my car. Um, and this is my, my planning area here, so um, I have a place for my projects, a place to sit, um, a place to coordinate all the things that need to be coordinated. The kids come in, they turn in their work here, and you can see these have already been cleared out. They don't have any planning pages in them, and um, I take a look at them. So I'm standing right here and I send the children from this desk to the block room. And in the block room, which is that room you see right there, the children will do a block, a puzzle, a maze, something to prepare them for their study in the classroom. And they may do something like the magnet tiles, which you see here. And uh, from time to time, we'll put up Polaroid shots of what the kids have done themselves. And, you know, we have just different kinds of things here. We have Kiva blocks, which you'll see. Here we've got rush hour, which is great for spatial orientation. And we have this room as sort of a Montessori style prep room where they work with their hands because the research shows that uh, when the children work with their hands, they're, they're much more engaged in their daily seat work. Um, so we want to get them to do that. Sometimes they'll do the blocks or the puzzles. These are the impossibilities blocks. They'll try and get them back together in a cube, so on and so forth. And my daughter was in here, so it's a little bit of a mess. Here we have a communications board. The communications board is meant to be a place where we, we put things down we think that parents would be interested to know. So learning and teaching strategies, you know, certain, this one says teach pattern recognition often. You know, provide meaningful challenge with reasonable chances of success. Change the type of instruction or student activity every 20 minutes. That's a big one. We really focus on that one here in the center. Um, you know, and we we'll also talk about this one which is one person's personal, one's personal emotional state greatly influences what is recalled during a learning episode. Deal with emotional influences in your classroom before teaching. Meaning if the kid's got a negative attitude, if the parent's got a negative attitude, it will, it will tank the child's work. And so we really talk about keeping their, their speech positive and um, speak about how to, how to do that. So there's just different articles that I'll find and I'll post here. And this is a list of all the things that I talk about when you know infants and their math readiness um, a dot pattern poster board that the children make with the dot pattern paints we do uh, the dot paints here in the in the block room to reinforce the dot pattern and various things you know we have here a section on chisholm bop and finger binary and the bathroom is back here around the hall so there's kind of a storage area for us so there's the bathroom and yeah and then there is uh, where Jen works, the office. And here we have some examples of the origami that the children have done. We are actually pretty big on the origami, except that most of the time we find that the children are not really ready to follow the instructions until about level 12. This is a copy of my planning sheet. Each week the children get a planning sheet. And on the planning sheet, 
You know, I write out their assignment here, and I make specific notes. I need the name, date, and time. I might circle plan order is important. I might circle study pages closely. I might say read out loud. You need to do this problem from the left-hand side. I might really want the parent to observe here. And then I give them some kind of a problem on it that is a, a solving problem for the whole week to kind of think about as they look at their packets and they take their packets out each day. And uh, the kids compete for prizes if they can solve this. And then the parents can come and check the answers here about the back. And then we have a, a board, a communications board, where the families tell us that they're going to be in and out. You know, some things that we do with the Kiva blocks. This is where the parents drop their tuition checks so that we you know, we're not handling checks during class because it gets kind of busy. And, you know, a little, again, some more marketing flyers and various things. So this is the front area of the classroom. Once I have talked to the parents and I feel, you know, here I'm standing, looking at all the children's work, checking for dark marks, checking for the signs of difficulty. And once I've talked to the parent about how well the week went, uh, we send the parent upstairs to go to Starbucks or Straub's or any number of the, gr the shops that are around here and we say, you know, you can go ahead and go or you can stay. We like them to stay because then if we see something during class that we want them to witness, we send them to a little viewing area that we have in the classroom. All right, so let's go on back. So I'm here and I usually have a kid and I'll say, you know, Akash, are you ready to go in? And he says, yes, and this is about this time I'm talking to him, talking to him. And from here to that room at the end of the hall, it gives the children a chance to settle down and get prepared for their work. So I kind of walk them back and these are our side working rooms. And in our side working rooms, some of the children work independently. Uh, some of the children can't handle distraction very well. And so sometimes we'll have somebody in here working with them um, just on a semi-private basis, uh, just depending on the need. And so that's a private working room. This room is actually serving right now for us as a reading grading room. And so my reading staff member does all her stuff in here. And then this finally in this back room will be eventually our reading room. We have a number of books and those books are actually going to go up on a high shelf on the wall above this and we're going to, you know, parse them as needed and then we're going to put sort of working stations underneath here. But right now this is our just our coordination room for the reading program. So you can see all of our reading is all coordinated and uh, organized and laid out here. And we got a couple of filing drawers on Craigslist so we can get them out of the crates, but uh, we're missing some pieces on that. And then we have our, our reading comprehension books are over here. So for right now, this is just a stock room for us until we get it set up. It's just, you know, every once in a while I'll do a, a night at a time. And then finally, we're in the main classroom. So here is where the children come in, and you'll see the dot patterns on the wall. We use those. Those are actually little removable stickies. And those stickies are uh, the ideas to really provide the importance of how that dot pattern works. And you can see the color-coded bins. So the red is my Tuesday class, the blue is my Wednesday class, the yellow is my Saturday day class, and the rest are sort of by appointment. Um, and what will happen is we'll, we'll take those bins, those baskets, and we'll put them on this lower shelf here so the kids can all get to their own pockets and their own files. We put a heavy emphasis on the children being as independent as possible, and we want them eventually to have, these will be file drawers, this is our stock. And as they walk past here, sometimes we'll get out different things than we planned. But we almost always want the children to be able to have some sense of control over their work. Um, so eventually these are going to be five drawer verticals, and they're going to pull them out. And that just cost us, it's going to cost us about $600. So we need to uh, figure that part out. The main classroom. And these long tables are freebies for us for now, but uh, we really think we can handle more students if we do a circular table. And so this room is actually big enough to, to assign people to tables based on level. And so over the next two to three months, we're going to be um, coordinating based on level. So uh, you can still see some of the carpet squares in the back. When we originally got in here, this was an old photography studio and they had scenes painted on the walls. They had to rip them all down for us. And they only had one bank of lights because it was dark in here. And um, we discovered after we negotiated our lease, we were going to need more lighting. And they told us that if we would just take these carpet squares instead of trying to match the carpet, you know, they would put in the lighting for us for free, which was more important to us at the time. So there's that. And then over here, I'm kind of coordinating some paperwork, but we have lower height tables so that my little ones can, um, can sit with me. And then there's sort of a, a working area for all the things I need for my little guys. So this is the Enope Center of St. Louis, and we invite you to come by and see us sometime soon. Thanks so much and have a great day.